I have never been so thrilled to share about something on this channel as I am this presentation. I know this sounds a little cheesy, but it feels like something that's been burning inside of me for a long time. If you're one of those who would rather skip over everything leading up to the main topic and just get to the meat of the subject, I'll have this video divided up in chapter markers. And if you're not familiar with chapter markers on YouTube, you can click on those markers in the description below. But my hope is that you'll watch the whole presentation because what I have to share with you are very inspiring things that really add to that main topic. As you probably know, the primary mission of the channel is to shorten that learning curve for new gardeners and inspire people to grow their own food. But now I'm taking on a secondary mission and it's very much tied to that first, regenerative gardening, which has a lot to do with soil building and soil health. And this talk that I gave to the Equality Garden Club was originally a talk that I had been giving to garden clubs in South Florida about soil building. So I'm just curious, how many people have heard of regenerative gardening or regenerative agriculture? Okay, it's not very well known yet. And when I first heard of regenerative agriculture, I was like, come on, I mean, there's, there's, all, there's organic, there's permaculture, there's how does that fit in with everything else? Well, actually, a lot of these other things work in concert with regenerative agriculture. So yes, I was talking about how the soil is full of life and this is all so critical. One eats another and then those nutrients that were in that microbe feeds the plant and they have a relationship, of, a beneficial relationship with the plant. Just a quick preview of what we're gonna go over. If you've seen our place, we, we bought at the bottom of the market in, in Oakland Park, you would not believe these pictures because it's night and day and what, what we've done to that place. It used to be the eyesore of the neighborhood. It's actually to make a point about building soil and I'll get into that later. So Stacks Urban Harvest. My primary mission of Stacks Urban Harvest, the YouTube channel, was to help shorten the learning curve for new gardeners in South Florida and I'm, I'll get into that later. But the secondary mission, I, as I've followed this individual, I can't mention this person's name yet because there's a contest involved and whoever wins the contest gets a garden tour and whatever I'm growing, if, you, if I have cuttings I can give you, seeds, what, you know, the grand prize. Anyway, regenerative gardening, what is regenerative gardening? Uh, soil building, this talk was originally about soil building. I gave this to the Rare Fruit Council of Palm Beach. And then the Treasure Coast Rare Fruit Club president, she saw the video and she said, could you please give this talk to our group? And so I did. A subtitle to this talk could be, Plants Can Reach Their Genetic Potential by Working with Nature. And I'm moving more and more in that direction. You'll see one of the videos that I'm gonna show is the trailer to my YouTube channel. And I'm gonna let you taste it. I gave a series to Cynthia Schaefer. We bring two totally different approaches to organic gardening. Mine is pretty much, you know, I'll use neem oil, I'll use BT and other organic pest controls. Her motto is, what would the forest do? No one's going around spraying for this fungus or this pest. But there's an ecosystem that's in balance and it works. And I'm moving more and more in her direction. And uh, the, one of my latest, I think it's, it is probably my latest video, is the experience that I've had in the past year with aphids and ladybugs. And I'm not gonna get into that. If you want to watch the video, encourage you to watch the video because it was a game changer in my garden. This plant, this is the, the plant that we're going to auction off. 
I don't know if you saw on my Facebook post, the eggplant tree, I'll show you pictures of that. So this is a, a fresh graft, grafted about four months ago. It's definitely taken, I had to cut it back because it was growing a little too vigorously for that union, and the union's strong, but you don't want it to let it grow too vigorously at first. What I love here at EGC and garden clubs like this is that we have ideas and we're always learning, no matter how experienced we are in gardening, there's always something else to learn. Every day that I'm out in the garden, there's a new experience, a new lesson for me to learn. And so we learn out in the garden and we also learn from each other and I, I love that. If you can tell me her name and what she does, you win. <laughs> I'm not sure, but is that Elaine Ingram? Ingham, you're right. Yeah, and she's a soil microbiologist. We have a winner! <laughs> Whoa! Right on. Can, do, do you know anything uh, else? I haven't like gone down her rabbit hole so much, but uh, I know she's really into composting and has developed I mean, I get her emails now trying to get me to take her class and all that kind of stuff, so she's really pushing the study of like the soil. Uh... Soil biology, right. You win a garden tour, and whatever you see, hey, oh yeah, I'll give you a cutting. Oh, you need seeds for that? I'll, I'll get you loaded up, anything you want. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Dr. Elaine Ingham. She founded the Soil Food Web, and her program has been so aggressive lately in the past few years in educating, educating, educating. Sure, they have certifications that you can go through their online school and get certified for this and that, and I'll talk more about that later. But there's so much mind-blowing information, just free, like, these webinars on my long drive to West Palm Beach, I'm just like listening to her lectures and her webinars. And after I gave my, my talk in Palm Beach, then I, I was like, oh shoot, I wish I knew about this to tell them about that. I mean, this is just, let me say, this bold woman had the audacity when she was going through uh, working on her PhD in uh, the Colorado State University. She had the audacity to challenge her professors that told her, oh, those, that microbiology, they're just, it's just there. It doesn't do anything. And she said, hey, well, her main, professors, her main professor was with her on this. But he, he said, now go, go to the other professors who were, by the way, all men, any of the professors that had anything to do, remotely to do with soil biology or agriculture, and they all told her, no, you're wasting your time. Don't, don't go down that route. You're not going to make any money. She was de bounty determined. So that was like around 1979, 1980. I know she, she got her PhD in 1981. Audacity. Who does she think she is? I'm sorry, there's no contest on this one, but <laughs> does anyone know who this man is? Matter, there's no contest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is uh, Jeffrey Smith. He is with the Institute for Responsible Technology. Oh, I know Gary knew. <laughs> he was being nice. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so. I've listened to this man's lectures while I was out turning the compost and got this Bluetooth speaker going. I'm listening to his lecture. I'm just fascinated by what he has to say. Well, I, when I got furloughed, I thought, you know, what the heck? Let me just send him my portfolio and see if he has some work for me that I could do. He wrote back and said, I, I like your work. He ended up giving me work. and. Then, after I've done a few projects for him, he had me work on this film, and then it, it won this Telly Award. You can see this film, Don't Let the Gene Out of the Bottle. Just a quick synopsis of, of what the film is about. It's a, a, you can watch the film for free. It's only 16 minutes long on protectnaturenow.com. This was about Dr. Lang Ingham's story. 
it sounded like a great thing. Something that happened in 1991. Every day when I was working on this film, I was pinching myself. I'm like, I can't believe I'm doing this work for Jeffrey Smith, and it's about Dr. Langingham. I just, I'm like, it was, it, have you ever had, had something that the universe just like beam down into your lap, and you're just like, ah. Oh. <laughs> this was one of those moments for me. Uh, and it was like I was furloughed for a reason. The pandemic It was a scary time, but I wouldn't have had the time of working full time and, and working on this. I spent a full year working, not like every day, but over a full year working on this, this film. What happened in 1991? No matter what ideas you have about GMOs, GMOs in food, this is different because this has to do with genetically modifying bacteria out in the environment. What could go wrong, right? She was a professor at Oregon State University, and she had a graduate student that was fascinated with GMOs. Oh, I want to do, I want to do my graduate work on this, on find a GMO and, and study it. He, he chose this particular GMO that they had, those scientists had a really good intention. Scientists genetically engineered bacteria to convert plant matter into alcohol. The plan was to distribute it to farmers so that they could mix it with leftover crop material to create alcohol, which would run their tractors. Of course, it started with a good intention. The intention was after the farmers are done, they've harvested their crop, they rake up the residues from the, the, from the field. You could now, instead of field burning, you would rake up all of those residues on your field, put it in a bucket, big bucket, on your farm, inoculate this genetically engineered microorganism that produces alcohol, and in about mm, two weeks, open the spigot at the bottom of that bucket, and out comes 34 proof alcohol. What could go wrong? I had a graduate student that was interested in genetically engineered organisms. In an experiment that would ultimately be used to help him get his PhD, he mixed the sludge from the genetically engineered bacteria with soil and planted wheat seeds. Two weeks before they were going to release this bacteria to do a, a field test, two weeks, he walks into the greenhouse laboratory. My graduate student went into the laboratory of a Saturday morning and went, oh my gosh. A whole bunch of the plants are dead. All of those um, treatments where the genetically engineered bacterium had been present were dead. They were slime on the surface of the soil, just green mush. It actually was decomposed by the um, alcohol being produced by the Klebsiella planticula engineered to make alcohol. Slime on the surface of the soil. Just think, you know, this, this film wasn't saying Dr. Elaine Hingham saved the planet Earth, uh, all the life on Earth. We weren't saying that. We were, we were saying, though, what if? What if the graduate student hadn't done the experiment and the alcohol-producing bacteria were released two weeks later? Think about this. What if all plant life on Earth just turned into mush? Where did, what did that leave us? It would have affected the whole world. All food plants, trees, grasses, brassicas, anything. And it's now going to start to produce alcohol. What's the effect of alcohol on the root systems of plants? It's to kill them. We owe our lives to the plant life. And not just the plant life, the, the microbiology. One thing that this film points out, People were all up in arms about uh, genetically modified embryos, human embryos in China. Well, the larger the organism that's genetically modified, it's like there's so much ethical concern about it. And yet, the biggest harm can come from a microbe. We didn't need a pandemic to show us how devastating a microbe can be and how quickly it could spread across the globe. We didn't need that, but not a lot of people know about this story and check it out. This is our place. Gary, you've seen our place. You've seen our place. This is our place when we, when we bought it. Okay, go ahead. That's a lot of dead dirt. Dead dirt. Go ahead.
That's what we have now. Whoa. Notice the biodiversity. How many years? Yeah. Next, yeah, I'm, I'm going to answer it by the next. There you go. Ten year challenge. So, from a lot of dead dirt into property full of life, this was the eyesore of our neighborhood. Our neighbors love us. <laughs> I'm an admin for the South Florida Edible Gardening Sustainable Living. If you can say that and memorize that title, you're, you deserve a garden tour also. Before the pandemic, we had about 3,000 members. Now we have, can you see that? Over 20,000. That's the effect that the pandemic had on people. <sighs> what if this gets worse? Empty shelves, what if this gets worse? I need to eat. I need to grow some food, <laughs> and we're not quite out of the woods yet. So this is why I started Stack Urban Harvest, besides the fact that I was furloughed and I had this extra time. So this is one thing I, I did with my extra time while my husband was panicking, like, <laughs> how are we going to pay our bills? <laughs> <laughs> our food is not as nutritious as it used to be, and we're talking about produce that you get at Publix, or sprouts. I love sprouts. Haven't been there yet, but I can't wait. I, I can't wait to check it out. But unfortunately, I've heard you have to eat like at least two apples to get the same nutrition that we could get eating an apple uh, like 50 years ago, right? And there's different theories as to why. I know why. I mean, our soil is so depleted, as you'll see later on. So what if we could grow more nutrient-dense foods than what we can buy at Publix or Sprouts? And what if we could increase our crop yields by working with nature and more productive and resilient soil, better water holding capacity, improve water quality, reduce flooding, increase food security, and increase biodiversity? All this can be done with the, the principles that I'm going to show you, and I'm so excited about this, with regenerative gardening that we can do in our backyards. So cover a crop. You're armoring the soil. Keep it covered. And this is something that I'm just now implementing in my garden. And so what I, the, the, the talk that I gave at West Palm Beach, it was... I'm going to go over here and talk to these people, too. <laughs> now I'm off camera. <laughs> it, was, it was all about what I've done. And, and I want to share what I've done and, I've, and what's working in my garden. And then when I did the, the talk in, in Treasure Coast, it was a little more, OK, this is what I've done, but this is where I'm heading. I am like diving in tonight. I like <laughs> fall into regenerative agriculture, regenerative gardening, biodiversity. This is a big, big thing. It makes a difference above ground and below ground. Above ground, it with the with the bugs. You know, you're you're bringing in beneficial bugs, and below ground, you got the micro. Um, microbes, they, it prefers this root, but it's also beneficial to the roots around it. And composting, I don't know, it's, was anyone here for my talk? I know Michael was for my talk for uh, you know, composting. OK. So yeah, this is Bubba Jr., Big Bubba, and Goliath. <laughs> if there was a fifth one that I was going to share, it's more applicable to big farms, right? They, they also talk about mob grazing, where they get their, their, the way that they graze their cattle or whatever other animals that they have. No-till. So for gardening, the main point is minimal disturbance. On my property before, you know, before we had the, the biology going in the, in the soil, <clears throat> You could dig anywhere on the property. You would not find an earthworm. Earthworms and bugs are indicators of what's going on, whether it's in the soil or above ground. They're indicators. The indicator 
that I, we couldn't, we didn't, we just didn't have it. It just wasn't happening. And you dig anywhere on the property, no earthworms. Now, with the principles that I'm going to share tonight, I dig anywhere on the, on the property where I've done this. And, oh, I'm sorry to disturb you, earthworm. And it's not just the earthworms that I'm disturbing. I'm disturbing the life that's in the soil. We are just barely scratching the surface tonight. To dig deeper, I'm going to give you some sources if you, if you were interested in, in digging in deeper. Now, these are not books by Dr. Ingham, but she wrote the foreword to, I know, at least this one. Like I mentioned, she has just a whole lot of webinars that she has available on this topic on YouTube. And if you sign up like you did, you're getting all these alerts. Hey, we got another webinar. And I'm, I'm like, yeah, sign me up. Let's go. I want, I want to watch it. Because I followed her before I started hearing about regenerative agriculture, right? And it was just a natural pro progression for her to join up with the regenerative movement. This is her YouTube channel. You can find a lot of the webinars and testimonials on her YouTube channel. So just look up Dr. Elaine Ingham or uh, Soil Food Web. I touched on the fact that there's a symbiotic relationship between the microbes and the plant roots. What happens, we know that the sun provides energy to the, to the plants and they perform this thing we call photosynthesis, right? And what happens with that photosynthesis? It creates sugars and it sends, exudates into the roots and those exudates feed microbes and, but there's, there's, a, there's that symbiotic relationship with a microbe is like, I got some boron here. What do you got for me? And it's not just sugars, it's some carbohydrates and some proteins. So basically, the plant's providing some cookies for the microbes. The fascinating, mind-blowing thing about those exudates, the exudates are a way that the plant communicates with the microbes saying, I'm deficient in magnesium and manganese, boron. I need potassium. And these microbes will actually go and collect that. And this might be tough for some people because we're addicted to fertilizers. We're addicted to fertilizers. But nature has a way, the microbes have a way, whether it's sand, silt, clay, or even organic matter, the microbes have a way with their enzymes to get that manganese from the sand, silt, and clay, and they congregate around these roots. When, when the whole plant, above ground and below ground, are covered with the right biology, here's another thing she had the audacity to say, that it's impossible for disease and pests to get to that plant. It's like an armor that that plant has. When it has the right biology below ground and above ground, audacity, who does she think she is? Healthy soil, healthy plants, healthy people, and healthy animals. This is one of the mind-blowing things that, that I was just like, oh, I wish I knew about this before I gave that talk to the Palm Beach people. This is a study that she did in New Zealand. Have you ever heard of facial eczema in animals? It's not the skin eczema, it's the facial eczema where the jaw of the animal will atrophy so much that it will actually drop off the animal. And if, you, if, if the jaw drops off, it can't eat, it dies. This farm was plagued, all the animals had facial eczema. On this side of the fence, we're gonna do conventional agriculture. On this side of the fence, we're gonna do it your way, Elaine. Let's do it your way. The soil biology, let's do it. They div divided the animals equally, the equal amount of facial eczema on, on the conventional side, equal on the soil biology side. On the conventional side, none of those animals recovered. On the other side, all the animals recovered. Biology in the soil matters. Why? It, it gives nutrition. It, it, it gave 
she mentioned two nutrients that they were getting on the biology side that they were not getting on, on the conventional side. Go ahead. Composting. So composting, we, you can compost. I meant to bring my Bokashi composter in from the car to show you. Who does Bokashi composting? I just learned about it myself. Not all anaerobic bacteria is bad. Who does fermenting? Okay, I, I do fermenting. It's very healthy for you, right? We talk about the, the gut bacteria and how it's important. So this is a microbiome for, for the soil. So Bakashi, I have this, this bucket, really nice bucket that sits on our kitchen counter. EM1 is one of the inoculants that I, I use now. And you know the, the black fungus that gets on the leaves on avocado and I'm not having that problem now because I'm foliar spraying my mango and my avocado tree. And it's because the right biology is preventing that, that mold from growing. Biocomplete compost. There's this company out in California. I, I bought a bag. It was the most expensive compost I've ever bought, but it was worth it because it was biocomplete. These are, these are people that they've gone through Dr. E. Lang Ingham's school. They put this, this compost together. So I've been foliar spraying and making compost tea from their compost, and it's, it's amazing. Now, we have someone locally who does the name Geo Debs ring a bell? He's on the Facebook page for EGC. This is Geo Debs. He just got his certification as a soil lab tech with Dr. Eling Ingham's, uh, and he lives right here in, in Wilton Manors. You can get a soil test by him, and I'm so proud. He's, he just turned like 28, and I'm just so proud that he, he went through and got his certification. His next step is to get the certification to where he can help farmers convert their farms from conventional to regenerative agriculture. He told me I had to unlearn a lot of things. I could relate to that because l learning about all this, I've had to unlearn a lot of things. Only 1% of organic matter can add 10 tons of carbon per acre. This is, I mulch heavily. This is one thing that you can do, is, is mulch heavily. I get these huge deliveries of wood chip mulch. This is just filling my driveway, right? I don't get, I found someone who can deliver, and it's all free, free mulch from arborists. Call up an ar arborist and say, hey, would you, could you give me a delivery? I found an arborist that has a much smaller truck, so it's not quite overwhelming. Uh, the reason I wear a mask, because if you have allergies, the gases will kick up some fungi spores that can cause havoc. So I always wear a mask. Live regeneratively and let's grow together. <laughs>